1984, I was a professor at Boston University, uh, fresh out of graduate school. I really thought I would enjoy teaching mathematics, uh, but I found there was a job I just didn't like. It was in too much going on with uh, grading papers, talking to parents, grant proposals. So after I'd been there for a few years in 1984, I really also wanted to spark my art career and get my research going. It was really stale. So um, at about that time, I got a job offer to go out to a very cool place, the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, California. And uh, that's the place that launches those, those missions to Mars you read about, the Mars rovers and all that. So I was hired to go from being a theoretical mathematician where I was at Boston University to a guy who does what they call trajectory design. And my role was to get spacecraft to Jupiter for the United States, and in particular, the Galileo mission to Jupiter. Um, and that sounded really cool at first. Uh, however, I, when I got there, I found out that Jupiter is a real planet and that the spaceship is not just a point, but it's a $4 billion machine. So um, I say, well, this is not what I'm used to. Um, and they say, OK, well, you're responsible for getting this to Jupiter. Um, so I said, well, OK, I'll, I'll, tr I'll try designing a trajectory for that. And they gave me the rules for doing it, and I found one, and I was really happy about that. And I said, okay, well, how about finding about a thousand more of them? Every second, you have to find one over this given space. So after about a year, it was pretty clear that it was oil and water with me in the space business, and I was called to my boss's office, and he goes, you know, they're taking you off the Galileo mission. Um, well, you know, that was a pretty upsetting to me because I just arrived out there. I gave up a whole thing in Boston. On the other hand, something good happened. They said, you're going to be working on something else. It's a hypothetical spacecraft to the moon. The difference is, is that it doesn't use a standard route to the moon, which is really fast and gets there like the speed of a bullet, where you have to use a lot of fuel to slow down. This one is going to get there, and they want to get it there to meander in very slowly and be captured automatically. So I said, that sounds really cool. I've been thinking about that. They introduced me to the boss, and he goes, we'd like you to find this new fancy trajectory. And I knew from experience this had never been done before. So I figured, great, I can spend a year or two on this. He goes, yeah, we need to have this in three months. And uh, I said, that's never going to happen. And then part of me said, you know, I've been set up because they, I didn't really mix with this place very well. So um, I instantly went into a state of confusion. And with that state of confusion and uncertainty, my, my job was on the line. And my first reaction was to be fear-based, to really run for the hills. Uh, I was panicking. I went to my books. And I said, I'm never going to figure this out. It's impossible. This is really too difficult. And, uh, I, and, and I knew I couldn't do it in the three months. But I said, aha, I'm an artist. So what I'm going to do is turn this into a moment of opportunity. I'm going to do something exactly the opposite. Rather than be logical, I'm going to do a painting. And my reasoning was, if I do a painting of the route to the moon, my subconscious is going to access that route where my conscious mind could not do it. And maybe if I'm lucky, I'll see in that painting a little route to the moon, and that might save the day, although I, I thought it was pretty far-fetched. I know it worked for Van Gogh. He was very good with his paintings. I said, let me try that. So I did that. And this is a picture of what that painting looks like. And uh, here's the Earth, and there it is. There's this trajectory leaving the Earth and winds over to the moon. That's pretty cool. However, the real test was, does this thing work? So I had to transfer the, the, the trajectory to a computer, and there it was on the computer, this very fancy JPL software. I found this trajectory. It really works. So this was a revolutionary approach to space travel, where you find a route where you get, get captured around the moon automatically, the first time it had ever been done in the history of space travel. So I thought, they're going to throw rose petals in my path. It didn't work that way because I'm using the word chaos, fuzzy boundaries from my theory. That's what it was called because these regions where you get captured on the moon are very fuzzy. There's no de definition of them. So um, they basically told me, don't work on this anymore because we don't do this here. So I was like, my vision of NASA as being this great organization which promotes uh, you know, new innovation was not happening. So I did my regular job, but in my spare time, I worked on this because the route that I had found was two years to the moon, and, and I knew if I could find a short one, that'd be really valuable. And not using fuel for capture, that is really important, and it saves a lot of money. Four years went by, I'm called into someone's office who had a very high level there, and they said, we don't want you working on this anymore, because if you figure this out, it means that we will be able to employ less people, the missions will cost less money, this means we have to lay people off. I said, oh, um, I'm going to keep working on it, though, I did that. Then I was called into another office. They said, you're fired. <laughs> um, I said, well, I guess that strategy didn't work. Um, that was a tough day for me. Um, uh, the, the few days were tough. I lost my girlfriend, broke out in hives. 
I ran over a dog and it bit me when I went to see how I was doing. Um, my car just stopped working one day driving down the street. So I, I felt like I, a crows would come after me out of the, out of the, you know, the air if they, if, if they could. I was going through a really torture with this, with this decision uh, that they made. My life was in a state of confusion and I used it as an opportunity again. Like before, the opportunity was do the opposite. This one was let go of the struggle. Don't try to fight these people. So I just let it go and I said, you know, the previous five years is a wash, move on, I'm getting out of here. Then the inspiration of the universe happened. It wasn't a, a painting this time, what it was was a knock on my door. And there was someone staying there I never saw before. And he describes to me, and I'm leaving my job by the way, so I didn't want to hear about this stuff. He says to me, Japan wants to be the third country in history to launch a spacecraft to the moon. And it failed, and I knew about it from the press that it failed. And their, their mother craft, which was never designed to go to the moon, it, the, the two went up and one went off to the moon, never made it. The mother craft is still going around. And he said, we want to get that one to the moon. We can't do it. It's not enough fuel. It's not enough fuel to get it by the standard route. Uh, but maybe this kind of work you've been doing will be applied to that. He goes, I think your work, work is BS, but I'm willing to try anything. <laughs> uh, the moment he asked me that, it was like a light bulb goes off. And I said, oh, I know how to do that. In fact, the route is also the opposite of what you'd normally do. The route is you go beyond the moon. This is the route right here. You start at the Earth. You go beyond the moon. Instead of doing the straight line path like that, you go way out here. And then you come back. And if you come back, you can thread through this fuzzy boundary region where there's all this chaos. And you get captured for free. So we did it. The miracle is they believed it. <laughs> and then they verified it. And then a year later that day, they actually did the route to the moon, and it arrived on October 2nd, 1991, the first chaos route to the moon ever done. It saved their mission, and it saved my career. <laughs> the strategy I took for, this, for, the, for these really remarkable things to happen, these very lucky things to happen, is... I did the opposite of what I normally would do. And I always say to everybody here in the audience and listening to this, if you have a struggle in your life, whether it be a failed relationship, a job that isn't working, um, it could be anything you could imagine which is really tough, don't do the usual fear-based approach. Don't go and, you know, try to confront it head on and get all worked up and, and all, you know, really nervous and see a therapist and all that stuff. What you do is you do the opposite if you do the opposite, the universe will maybe help you, and you may get an unexpected miracle. And I can say that each one of these is another one of those stories of a special miracle. Thank you.